Hey, Riddlers. Even Sherlock Holmes can't solve a crime without evidence. But sometimes that evidence is really hard to spot. A bank was robbed, and luckily, the cops showed up real fast. They detained three people. They'd been near the bank when it all happened. There was a pregnant woman, an old man, and a blind guy. They all said they had nothing to do with the robbery, but the cops were pretty sure they knew who had done it. Who's suspicious? The blind guy. He has a camera. How would that even work? Ethan, Jacob, Caden, and Jackson went to a brand new ski resort. It was so new, they were the only guests there. Perfect. They went out skiing together, and after a while, they all headed off in different directions. Later on, they found Jacob lying on the snow, unconscious. They called Detective Smith right away. He looked at the crime scene and spotted the crucial piece of evidence. So which one of them did it? It was Ethan. There's something different about him. At first, he had two matching ski poles, but suddenly now they're different. John went to Megamart to buy some food. Donuts, burgers, this place has it all. John was in there for two hours. Then he headed for the parking lot. Someone had just crashed into his car. Was it worth all those donuts he ate? John went up to the three people near his car. I was just passing. Stopped to see if you needed any help. I was shopping with my son. We didn't drive. We live right over there. I got here half an hour ago. That's my car. Who crashed into John's car? See the kids on board sticker? Looks like that guy did drive here. He almost got away with it. Two guys got kidnapped. It was all over social media. It all happened a few months ago. Detective Brown's on the case. After months of looking, he was on to something. He had found the criminal's house. He snuck in. When he got to the basement, he found three guys all tied up. Brown realized one of them was the kidnapper, pretending to be a victim. Who's the kidnapper? The guy with a clean, shaved face. If he'd been tied up for months, he should have a full-out beard by now. Sam was chasing a thief. He'd just stolen his girlfriend's purse, but the thief must have run track in high school or something. Sam could barely keep up. The thief ran into a restaurant and hid among the customers. Sam went in. He looked around and spotted the thief. Which one is he? There he is. He hid the purse behind the chair. Mr. White's sons found their dad unconscious. On the floor in his office, they called Detective Davies. Here's the backstory. Mr. White is uber rich. Each brother was going to inherit loads of money. One of them must have needed money ASAP. Davis questioned each of the brothers separately in Mr. White's office. I came in here to feed the fish. I saw dad. He was fine. I came by to discuss my business plans. Dad gave me some great advice. I went into dad's office. I needed a favor. I wanted to borrow his car to impress a girl. 
Who lied? Jerry said he came to feed the fish. Sure, there's an aquarium, but no fish. Mr. Wilson and Mr. Moore were on their private jet. They just signed a really important contract. Then, Mr. Wilson was telling Detective Taylor what happened. Mr. Moore put the contract on the table and went to the toilet. Suddenly the door opened and he was sucked out of the jet. What a terrible accident. Detective Taylor looked around the cabin. He realized Mr. Wilson was lying. How? If the door had opened, the contract would have flown away. But it's still right there on the table. The owner of a ski resort called Detective Miller. Last night, during a heavy storm, someone stole all the resort's cash. It was the end of the season, so there were only three guests. The detective questioned all of them. I didn't leave my room last night. I slept right through the storm. I took a sleeping pill and passed out. I was out all night. I got back like five minutes before you got here. Who stole the money? It was John. There weren't any footprints leading to the resort. He made it all up. Detective Johnson was having lunch at a cafe. He looked through the window, saw his neighbor rushing home. They both lived next to the cafe. Suddenly, she ran back in, all freaked out. She said her apartment was robbed while she was out. She didn't touch anything, just ran to find the detective. Detective Johnson went to see the crime scene. And on his weekend, ugh, he looked around and realized there was no robbery. How did he know? The umbrella. His neighbor had it with her when she was rushing home. And she said she didn't touch anything? Well, she obviously lied. She just threw some things around to make it look like a robbery. Detective Smith got a call. The cashier at Ronald's got attacked at noon. Smith came and looked around. He decided to question the workers of the office nearby. The manager said they usually come in for lunch. I was there today, for breakfast though. I never go to Ronald's. Fast food is nasty. I've been on a diet this whole month. Haven't been in there for ages. The detective had found the culprit. <laughs> Who? It was Mark. He's lying. He said he never goes to Ronald's. So why is there a french fries wrapper in his trash? The biggest bank in town just got robbed. Local police was all over it. They even had two suspects. Wow, that was fast. Some cops went over to search their houses. They saw a clue and figured out who the criminal was. How? There's the same picture in both houses. But here, it's upside down. There's probably a stash behind there. And... Of course there is. Laura was found in her house. You guessed it. Unconscious. Detective Roberts was on the scene. He questioned Laura's neighbors. Today's my day off. I've been home alone all day. I was gonna go on a picnic with some friends, 
but it's been raining non-stop. I got home like half an hour ago. I was at the office all day. I went shopping. Just got back. Who's lying? Emma's lying. It's been raining all day. If she really left and came back, it wouldn't be dry under her car. That's the kind of thing a real detective spots right away. There was a robbery at a warehouse. Obviously, the cops questioned the security guard. He was hot, so he sat down to watch some football, had some ice water. Just then, two men broke into the room and hit him. He was out cold. When he woke up, the thieves were already gone. He didn't touch anything, just immediately called the police. When did this happen? Mm, like an hour ago. The policeman saw a tiny clue. The security guard was lying. There was no robbery. Did you spot the evidence? He got his drink over an hour ago. The ice should have melted by now. Hey, which case was the hardest? Tell me which one you failed. See you guys next time. Hey, have you ever been tricked by scammers? Like online scams, a phishing email, or a phone prank? Hello. I've had some pretty close calls. So has pretty much everyone I know. Let's have a look at some real life stories. We're going to Miami for the weekend. Surfing, sun, clubs, you know. My friend's looking for a nice apartment on Airbnb. Hey look, this host says laundry's unavailable right now. Hey Rick, I'm happy to host you for as long as you need. But unfortunately, laundry service will be unavailable till August 3rd. Hi there, can we have a discount then? Sorry, I'm afraid that's not possible. But this guy's ready to give us $20 off if we pay him on PayPal. Cool. I'm gonna book it right away. No! What's wrong? The answer? Never ever fall for any of these offers. Don't give money to your host outside the Airbnb service. You'll never get any compensation if something goes wrong. Dude, let's find another apartment, or at least book the first one. We can just go for the weekend. We can do without the laundry service. Now I'm gonna visit my girlfriend, Sarah. Hey babe, what's up? Oh hey, I just bought a lovely H&M dress for Saturday's party. Look, they just sent a tracking number. Dear customer, your tracking number is 6482957690. Please sign in to track your order. Oh, I have to sign in again. No! What's wrong this time? The answer? H&M's website is hm.com, not hm.shop.com. Tracking an order doesn't usually require any signing in, and they didn't give any order details? Very suspicious. This one's about my Auntie Hilda. She works from home. Hi dear, want some of your favorite cookies? Hi, I'm Laura from Microsoft. We've just spotted a dangerous virus on your computer. It's gonna destroy your software. Oh no, what should I do? You have to give us remote access to your computer. Here's the name of the app. We'll fix it at once. Just install it and re-enter your login and password. Oh, sure! No! What's wrong this time? The answer? First of all, you have a Mac, my darling little auntie. It has nothing to do with Microsoft. These scammers just call random people until they find someone who's trusting and sweet, like you. 
Anyway, real Microsoft guys couldn't spot a virus on your computer from hundreds of miles away. If anyone calls you and tells you these stories, they're trying to scam you. Hey, you've just been selected as a winner in my giveaway! Congratulations! You are now the owner of a brand new iPhone 11 Pro. Please get back to me ASAP to get your award. You only have to send me $50 for mailing costs. No way, I don't buy it. What's wrong with the message? Look, it's not the real Azzyland. There's no blue checkmark badge next to her name. It's an imposter. Gotta flag it right away. Bye bye, scammer. Hey Mike, what are you doing? You up for some Mortal Kombat later? Uh, sorry. I sold my PS on Craigslist. To a guy from Colorado? He sent a check. Oh, wait. It's for $300, not $150. I gotta check it with him. Hi Mike, sorry, I sent you the wrong check. It's $150 too much. Can you send a $150 check back to me? So sorry for the inconvenience. Man, he's lucky. I'm an honest guy, right? Let me get my checkbook. No, stop! What's wrong this time? The answer? Never send any money to people you don't know. That check might be fake and you've just sent him 150 bucks. Go to the bank first and make sure his check is real. Billy dear, something's wrong with our Netflix account. Can you have a look please? Don't even bother mom, just flag it as spam. What's wrong with the letter? The answer? Three problems. Number one, the logo is slightly different. Number two, that's such a generic but slightly weird greeting. Hi dear. Three, official letters usually aren't that urgent. Granny, I missed you so much. Oh hi dear, love you. Just a moment, it's something about my bank account. Hello, someone just used your card in Miami, was that you? Oh, hello, no way, I'm in Dallas. Good thing we caught it, we blocked the transaction. Could you tell me your account number please? Uh, sure, it's 9736585921. You'll receive a verification pin via text, please confirm it. It's 669871. Great, I can see your latest transactions. Now we need to block the pin on your account so you get an alert when it's used again. Can you confirm your pin? Oh, of course, it's... No! What's wrong with Granny's call? The answer? No bank would ever ask you for your pin. Ever. Ugh, this show is tough. My brain's sweating. Yeah, you're right, man. Hey, you got a message, bro. Mm-hmm. What? Whoa, yes! Lucky me! Look at this! Hi, I'm Linda from eStore. You've won our top prize. Congratulations! It's a romantic trip to Paris. Ready to see the Eiffel Tower tomorrow? I just need your passport and social security numbers to get your papers ready right now. All expenses paid. You just need to pay $30 as a travel agency commission. Wait here, I'm gonna call my girlfriend. She's gonna freak. No, stop! What's wrong?
the answer? First of all, look at the company name. E-Store? Really? Okay, then lottery winners don't usually have to pay to get a prize. And anyway, bro, did you even sign up for a lottery? Mom? What's up? Oh no! The virus is taking over the world! What? Why? Well, look at this message! Oh, wait, I have to log in. No! What's wrong? The answer? Wrong name. Anyway, never click a link, open an attachment, or download a file that you were not specifically expecting. If you want, you can contact the sender to see if it's real, or just ignore it. Hey Ron, what are you doing? My boss called me to do something for him. Isn't it your day off? What is it? I have to buy some gift cards for him. He just wrote to me. Hey, would you do me a favor? I want to get everyone at work some gift cards, but my assistant is totally swamped. Could you do that for me? I need 20 $50 gift cards. You can just text me their numbers and codes as soon as you get them. I'll reimburse you back at the office. And hey, could you keep it private, please? Are you that naive, bro? What's wrong with the letter? The answer? Why is it a private Gmail account, not the corporate one? Ask your boss to contact you via the company email, or just call you. It's better to sound a bit paranoid than be cheated out of your money, right? And dude, never ever give codes, pins, or passwords via text. Take care and keep an eye on your loved ones. It's so easy to get tricked nowadays. If you ever got duped by a scammer, share your story. Let's fight them together.